Welcome to Life Science Today, your source for stories, insights, and trends across the life science industry. I'm your host, Dr. Noah Goodson. This week, resets for biotech, antibiotics approval not enough, continued consolidation, and a normal deal. The views expressed on Life Science Today are those of the host and guests. They do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any organizations with which they are affiliated. It was pretty obvious over the last couple of years that some of the biotech valuations were ambitious. As the market hits some turbulence this year, organizations that have not fully delivered on their promises are seeing significant changes in their fates. One of these is Zymeworks, whose stocks have shed billions in value from highs above $55 a share at the beginning of 2021 to just $5.44 a share today. In this tailspin, All Blue Capital has stepped in with a $773 million cash bid offering a seemingly generous $10.50 per share price to completely purchase the company, valuing the company far below its projections of a year ago, but well above its current stock price. Prior to the takeover bid, Zymeworks has made moves with a new CEO, cleaned out upper leadership, and a 25% staffing cut. But many more steps may be needed to save the organization. In their favor, Zymeworks has some key partnerships in deep technology across the antibody space. This at least alleviates the one-trick pony risk and is likely the reason for the acquisition efforts of All Blue Capital. Whether Zymeworks' board sells to All Blue or not, I suspect we'll see a spat of similar moves as the capital markets continue to shift across 2022. The FDA has granted Fathom Pharmaceuticals approval to treat Helicobacter pylori with both their combination treatments, the Lukenza Triple Pack and Dual Pack. The therapies are not so much something new on the market, but combine the well-known antibiotics amoxicillin and clarithromycin in a triple pack, the acid suppressant vonaprazin is added. Both treatments were shown to be non-inferior to the extant therapies, and with drug resistance on the rise, new therapeutic approaches are absolutely needed. H. pylori is widespread, with an estimated 50% of the world's population carrying the bacteria in their stomach, but only a subset of people ever go on to develop gastric ulcers. The prevalence of the bacteria, however, means lots of opportunities for drug-resistant strains to develop. Even these new combination therapies only show a 78.5 to 84.7% eradication rate. The double approval might seem like a windfall for Fathom, who's aiming to bring the core element vonoprazin to the market for other conditions, key among them erosive esophagitis. Indeed, following the approval, they immediately announced a $260 million raise with $100 million up front from non-diluted revenue interest financing. The capital is meant to see their Vonoprazin pipeline to maturity. However, the markets are not particularly gentle at this moment and did not respond positively, with a 38% drop in value over this last week for a combined 55% drop in value year to date. The clinical research base has continued to trend towards consolidation. Moves have slowed a bit in 2022, but this may be more reflective of available targets than actual changes in the tendency of the market towards merging. Two moves last week kicked off this May. First, Catalyst Clinical Research, a small clinical research organization, CRO, with a predominant focus on oncology, acquired the EU-based CRO, Aptis Clinical. This is a case of two smaller CROs coming together to enable a more global impact, with Catalyst covering the US and Aptis across the UK and EU. This is the third M&A move of Catalyst since 2019, and mostly signals their desire to continue to advance as an organization with more global impact. With plenty of larger fish in the CROC, there are certainly abundant opportunities if they continue to advance their sales and footprint with trials on both sides of the pond. CROs are just part of the space. Another key segment for continued growth is site networks. One of the organizations scooping up and incorporating sites has been Cinexcel, 
whose model is based on diversified sites functioning as centers of excellence, hence the name. Their most recent move is to bring some CNS sites in from the company iResearch in Georgia. In keeping with CINXL's model, these will basically be integrated to the larger network, but stand alone in many ways functionally. While we head into a phase where pharmas and biotechs look a bit more amoebic, combining and breaking apart to find the best fit in flexible markets, the clinical research support space remains on a clear, consolidation-only track. In fact, if you hear or see a story of divestment or breakup in clinical development services anywhere, please let me know. Intercept Pharmaceuticals has sold their rights for international commercial sales of Akaliva to Advance Pharma for $405 million up front, plus $45 million in milestones. Akaliva is currently FDA approved to treat primary biliary cholangitis, but is in clinical trials for additional liver-related conditions. This deal gives Intercept the capital and freedom to remain focused on U.S. sales pipeline as well as advancing the rest of their clinical pipeline. Advance has plenty of experience bringing drugs to market, particularly across Europe. In a world of unprecedented deals and unpredictable markets, this particular partnership is a nice dose of normal global business partnerships. Thanks for joining me for Life Science Today, your source for stories, insights, and trends across the life science industry. Learn more at lifesciencetodaypodcast.com. If you like what you hear, please tell a friend. Once again, I'm Dr. Noah Goodson. I'll see you next week. 